In this video, we will take a look at what will be required if you have a winder stairway like this that might not meet current building codes and you might even be having a problem with using. And when I say using, you might have tripped a few times on it and would like to fix it. Now, before you think about fixing it, this video will definitely provide you with something to think about. So let's go ahead and take a look at the winder steps dying into one point here along with a three foot wide stairway and 10 inch treads. And I have built plenty of stairs like this before they changed the building codes. And I'm not going to go over all the reasons why these stairs are unsafe. However, I can tell you that the newer building codes require a six inch minimum measurement at the smallest section of the stair treads. That would be this area right here. And in order to make this work, we're going to have to go 10 and 3 eighths of an inch larger in this direction here and in this direction here. So we're going to be able to work with our original three foot wide measurement here. And if the width of your stairway is a little shorter or longer, then you might need to adjust this measurement here. And most of the time when we have a situation like this where we want to extend the stairway 10 and a half inches in this direction, we're going to have to move a wall. And that's probably the biggest reason why you're not going to want to do this type of stairway modification. Next up, let's go ahead and move the floor plan view to the other side of the stairway so you can get an idea of what we're working with here. And then let's go ahead and zoom out to give you an idea of how far you will need to extend it in this direction and in this direction here to create this section of the stairway. And then I will go ahead and move this section here over to here. We'll just kind of lay it on top of it or build it into it to give you an idea of the adjustments you will need to make to the landing. And something like this might not work for every stairway. However, it will work for a stairway that you're going to be installing a finished material on top of because you're going to be modifying the area underneath the finished materials like carpeting or wood flooring. So again, you can kind of see here where the old stairway is over here and over here and up here and what is going to need to be added to it to make it work. For example, you might need to add a section like this, section like this, and a section like this. And again, this area will need to be located underneath the finishing of the stairway. And even though this video wasn't meant to provide you with building instructions, I can always provide those for you. Let me know in the comment area if you need step-by-step -step instructions. And if I get enough viewers who are interested in it, then I will definitely make another video. And for those of you who do not, you just need a general idea or even a few reasons why you might or might not want to do something like this then this video will have done its job. So in reality, these would just be small sections that you would frame on top of each other to make it work out. And of course, these sections would need to be securely connected to the existing stairway. Here is another video inspired by one of our viewers who was having a difficult time figuring out how to interpret the building code for a winder stairway dealing with the walk line that is usually going to be associated with a concentric circle. And basically a walk line comes in 12 inches from the inside of the stairway, whether it's curved or straight. So here we have a walk line and the walk line for this particular stairway produces steps at these points, the point along the walk line that are all the same size to check this stairway. And that's not going to be the case all the time when we start mixing squares and rectangles with circles trying to create a stairway like this one or even something like this or even something like this where we move the shape of the stairway a little further away from the center of the circle in hopes of creating a walk line path that will produce equal measurements for each step and that wouldn't be what is happening here where you can see that if we were to draw a walk line 12 inches away from the inside of the stairway that we will produce different size steps along the path. 
path. However, keep in mind that some of these steps will be the same depending upon how the center point is used for the stairway. And this is almost identical to the example the individual who was trying to figure out how they could get something like this to work. And in most cases, when you have a shape like this, it will be difficult to create a walk line using a concentric circle from the center point. When the building codes are asking for a walk line that runs parallel to the inside of the stairway and producing different measurements. And again, here's another example of coming off of a center point where we're going to have the same measurements here for some of the treads. However, this right here probably isn't going to be approved by your local building department, especially if they're looking for units of measurement along this path for the stair steps to be the same. And the only way I can think of to change that would be to change this to a curve or a circle where we can have a walk line that will produce equal sized steps along the path instead of dealing with something like this. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at how winders are affected by concentric circles and how they might be interpreted by your local building department. So here we have a three-step winder one, two, three, inside of a square. However, it could be a rectangle. And instead of three steps, you could always have two steps. Again, using a walk line with the same measurement for each step. However, this won't work if you start thinking outside the box and think that you can split these units of measurement up and draw your lines from the center. And I actually stumbled across this pattern by drawing these lines here. So I thought I would share it with you and provide you with something that is going to produce measurements that are going to be different sizes along the walk line. And since we have a 90 degree corner here, the one in the center is going to be 45 degrees. And the other two measurements, this one and this one, will be half of 45 or 22 and a half degrees. For those of you trying to figure out a different way to design a four step winder that would have the same measurements along the walk line. And as a special treat for those of you who have made it this far into the video and might be a little more interested in stair design, building, and the interpretation of building codes, then this might be something you can use as an argument if you're looking for some type of creative interpretation that will allow you to build this type of stairway. Even though the measurements aren't going to be consistent along this type of walk line. However, they will if we use our concentric circles. Coming 12 inches off for our walk line and then curving around the winder and then coming back to a straight line instead of continuing the straight line through all the way up. So with this interpretation of the building code, we will produce equal sized steps along the curved concentric circle walk line. And this doesn't mean you need to round off this section of the stairway. However, it might be if you get a little carried away with your interpretation of this building code and somebody decides that this is a curved stairway instead of a winder. And hopefully if I did my job right, you now have another way to build or design winder and curve type stairways that might meet your local building code. And thanks for watching. Also, don't forget to visit our website. We have an organized list of our videos there. You might have a difficult time finding that anywhere else.